Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson, our D programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at functions. Now we've seen functions previously, things like write line or read line, or even the main function, which we're going to talk about in another lesson. So make sure you subscribe for that. But let's just talk about the basics of functions and what's available in the D programming language. Now, this is just going to be a little bit of a teaser of some of the different ways that you can control how functions behave, but this is going to start the next series of a few lessons that will continue talking about more advanced features of functions. But if you're just starting with functions, this is a great place for you to begin. So let's just go ahead from the D programming language website, go to documentation, the language reference. And if you scroll or search through this, you'll eventually find functions here, which I've highlighted. Go ahead and click on that. And again, you can see all the different capabilities of functions here. Now, again, the point is, isn't for us to scare you here. I'm assuming that you're a beginner, at least in the D programming language, or maybe just looking at some of the cool things you can do. But I want to just tease a small amount of the features and different ways that you can control how functions behave. But with that said, let's go ahead and in this lesson, start with the basics. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just open up my drawing pad and I'll open up a terminal here. So I've got the main.d file here that we can work in to play around with functions. But let's first talk about functions and what they are. And oftentimes when folks explain this and how I like to explain a function is it's just something that takes a given input from one side and we sort of pass that into some black box here in most cases, and then we get some output here. This is our result. And this is sort of like a mathematical function as well. That's probably how you first learned about it or heard the name of a function here, maybe when studying graphs in your math class, where you have some function f of x, where x is your, again, input, and then you have some output here. And that's the resulting value for whatever's on your graph. So again, that's the basic idea of functions. Now, of course, as you progress, perhaps in your mathematical career or how we're going to talk about in programming, we don't have to have just one input. In fact, sometimes we don't even need any inputs at all. So these are all things that are allowed in programming languages and of course allowed in programming languages like D. So with that said, let's just go ahead and look at what a basic function is. So the basic idea of a function to break out the different parts here, and let me just go ahead and segment that off here is we'll have a return type. Then we'll have the name of our function and parameters. And this list of parameters can be any length. And then we have here between the curly braces, which define the scope of any of our local variables here, the function body, which is what this is referred to. And typically we have a return statement. If we're not returning any data, if this is void, this can be empty, or oftentimes we'll have some result here that we're returning. And there's different ways to return multiple values, but generally speaking, we have a return. So we could return maybe a structure of data if we want. Uh, and again, there's things that we'll look at later on in the series to describe that. So that's the basic idea. And what this makes up here, just to give some terminology and things that you'll see in documentation, is a function signature. Okay, and that's how we refer to different functions or perhaps functions with the same name, but maybe different parameter types, which again, we'll talk about later in the series. So here it is, function signature, if I move out of the way, just so you can see how that's spelled. All right, with that said though, let's just go ahead and move into our code here and see how we can use some functions. So the very first thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do is just create a function here. And let's just go ahead and say int uh, square or maybe just an add function. And let's just go ahead and give us maybe two numbers that we wanna add. Of course, we could have more, int a and b. And then we need to define the function body here, which, well, this one's not gonna do anything super interesting, but just return a plus uh, b here, and I'll end it with semicolon. So again, two different parameters here that must be specified and a return type int, which is going to be the result of an int plus an int. Well, that should return us an integer here. So let's go ahead and try it out here. So what I'll go ahead and do is do write line and let's just write out the result here, which I'm going to store in another integer here. Add, uh, or let me call it result, is the result of adding seven and two. And let's just go ahead and compile this our DMD and our main file and we get the value nine so here's my inputs seven and two and i get a result of nine here as to be expected 
So again, nothing too crazy here with this function here. Now, a few things just to keep in mind and to comment on your functions as you're writing them. So one thing to keep in mind is writing functions is a good thing. Why? <laughs> well, the reason why is it helps us abstract our code. Okay. Now, is it true that if we wanted to add two numbers here that we'd really need to write this add function? Probably not. In fact, I want you to just think of plus as well, really, it is a function. It's an operator that's going to operate on a plus b. The, the sort of ordering of things are a little bit different, but plus is still a function that's operating on specifically two values to add them together. But if we want, we can give this sort of a name. And again, if we want to do any sort of uh, operations here, we know exactly what's going on here. So for example, I could come into this function and just sort of document here uh, a uh, and let's just do plus b here. And let's just go ahead and rerun this program here. And oops, looks like I spelled uh, right line wrong here, right uh, line. And we get a helpful error message here. But now we can see 7 plus 2. And I'm also kind of cheating in this lesson and just showing you different uh, how right line is sort of parameterized here <laughs> for any number of arguments. So that'll be something that we have to also think about. Uh, but that's the sort of idea here. OK, so functions give us modularity. Again, we don't want to write all of our code in the main here. So for instance, in the sort of uh, guessing game and so on that I showed uh, a few lessons ago in this series, it might have been nice to write some different functions here. So that's one thing that we need to keep in mind. Uh, the second thing that I want you to keep in mind when writing functions is use good names and verbs. So what do I mean by that? Well, this is clear add. And add itself is sort of an action. Take this number on the left side, take this number on the right side, and put them together. And again, that's just very nicely declaring what exactly is going to happen. So oftentimes, you'll see functions like set value, or get value, or return value, being very specific about what's going on. And these days in our modern machines, we have enough memory that we can write nicely named functions, usually with sort of verbs about what's going on, meaning the actual action taking place. So that's just sort of a best practice to keep in mind. OK, so with that said, we're kind of covering the basics here. And I want to go ahead and show you again some different examples that we can do here. So let's go ahead and try this time with void here. And I'm just going to say print prompt here. And this time it's not going to take any arguments. And I'll just write line, welcome to our program. Write line, you know, press in option. And for the sake of this lesson, let's just assume that some options are being pressed in and we could read some user input or something. So let's actually call this function here. Let's uh, comment out our previous program here. And I'm just going to have us call print prompt here. And no parameters, so I just have the left and right brace here, our DMD here. And of course, you could see us printing out our prompt. Maybe again, this is some sort of task that we have to do over and over and over again. Now, again, looking at the naming of our function here, pretty decent here, print prompt. I try to be consistent with what I'm making uppercase or lowercase. Some folks use underscore. So that's just another note to be sort of consistent when writing your functions. So we have a little bit of style uh, thrown into this lesson here. Now, one thing to note about the D programming language that's quite nice here is that we don't actually need the parentheses after here if we don't have any arguments. So I can actually just get rid of these. And if I try to run this, well, it'll still work. And that's going to be something that's new if you're coming from other C-based languages like C or C++, for example, that if you don't take any arguments, then you don't need any parentheses. And in a way, it can just make your code a little bit nicer to read. There are less uh, sort of uh, different um, characters to parse through. And we'll actually find out with something known as the universal function call syntax. This makes it nice to call one function after the other if we are, in fact, returning some output. Not necessarily relevant here, but just something to know about uh, the sort of why or what's enabled by not having to use parentheses. So just something cool. Again, I want to tease you with as you watch some more of these videos here. OK, so the other things to keep in mind with our functions is that, well, this function here isn't returning a value. It's just void. So again, that means nothing. There's no return statement here. So that's just an example here. Now, if I wanted to come up here, some folks will put return and a semicolon. Again, if you're coming from a C-based language, that's probably uh, something you're used to. But again, you don't have to do that. We're just returning nothing. In fact, our main function is void, and that's not returning anything at all. So we don't have to. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. 
Now let's go ahead and do another little example here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here this time is actually uh, from our uh, add function, I'm just going to play around with uh, this for a moment here. And let's say that I have some conditional statement. I'm going to say if A is greater than zero and B is greater than zero for whatever reason, then we're going to return A plus B. And let's say if we only want this add function to work on sort of positive or greater than zero numbers, we have something like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile and run our program. And hmm, something interesting happens here. We get an error message. Now, why here? Now, I think for experienced users, this will be uh, quite obvious, but it's saying error function may not add no return expression or in a cert zero at the end of function. So basically it's saying there's one path we could take through this function here where we return, but if we don't have this condition satisfied, then we're not returning anything. We don't have any integer here. So this is just something to keep in mind with your functions as you write them. You need to return a value if you're asking for some return value type here. Otherwise, what you need to do is uh, it's saying do assert zero here. So let's just go ahead and run this. And uh, well, we're not calling this function, so we're not going to see the error here, but this is also allowed here. So again, D does a pretty nice job with a DMD compiler giving us error messages. Uh, so let me go ahead and just amend this function and sort of in a nonsensical way, uh, and we'll take care of that here. Okay. Now, one of the other things I'd want to go ahead and show you in D is that recursion is also allowed here. So let's go ahead and do something like count down here, and we'll take in some integer. And we probably want some uh, unsigned integer here because we want it to be a positive number. So the number here. And we're going to just make this a void function. And we can do recursive functions here where the basic idea is what we're going to say is if the number is greater than zero, then we will uh, return count down number minus one. Okay. Otherwise, Let's just go ahead and um, do our base condition here. Let's go ahead and say if number is equal to one, uh, right, blast off or something like this here. Okay, or I should say uh, less than or equal to one or equal to uh, zero. So this is the base case here. Base case for when we'll terminate our recursion. And if I write it this with the base case here, I can just uh, call our countdown function. Okay, let's go ahead and try this out. Uh, and just to make it a little bit more interesting, let's make sure that we write out our number here. And I'll go ahead and put dot, dot, dot. And let's go ahead and call this function. And I'm just going to comment these out uh, for now. And let's do our countdown. And we need a number. Let's start from five and run our program. And oops, <laughs> what did I do here? Well, it looks like... Um, Again, in this sort of recursive case, no matter what, I'm always going to, well, right line blast off here and then just keep counting down. So we should probably uh, return and terminate our recursion here. Okay, so that's kind of a fun uh, bug to run into. Let's go ahead and try this again. And again, with recursion, this was just a case where even though we had a void function here, well, you know, we still need to make sure that we have some terminating condition here. So let's see if this works. Five, four, three, two, one blast off. Okay. And you could set this to, you know, whatever uh, value you want, but uh, in general, this is, um, you know, something that's supported. So some, again, depending if you're coming from a graphics programming language or maybe other languages might not support recursion, for instance, but again, that's allowed in D. Okay. So hopefully that's giving you a good enough idea about how functions work in the D programming language. The last thing that I'm going to go ahead and just tease here in the D programming language that I think is relatively important is the notion of safe functions or uh, basically adding attributes to functions. So in the D programming language, you do have things like at safe, for instance, which means that, well, there's no uh, provable, I guess, um, sort of things that are considered bad behavior. And just again, to give you a little bit of a teaser of what this means here, uh, if we go down to the section on function uh, safety here, you can see what it means to be a safe function here. And again, this is a good thing. And this is one of the things that puts D ahead of many other languages in the sense that it can be uh, safe or allow you to write safer code. So that's just a little thing to add here for uh, add here. Uh, so just to go ahead and show you this running here, Let's go ahead and uh, bring back our um, result here uh, so that it actually uh, runs and 
print out. And, well, we can see the 7 plus 2 here. Alrighty, folks, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I hope you got a good introduction into functions, and I hope I teased you a little bit at the end there so that you want to learn a little bit more and make sure that you follow the rest of the videos in this series because we're going to be talking about functions a lot. We're going to be using them a lot, and D has some really cool things that you can do with functions. They've been really well thought out ideas, and I hope you'll be excited to learn a little bit more here as we continue on. As always, thanks for your time and attention. Give it a big like or comment below if you have questions, and we'll see you in the next one.